I've wrapped up programming these operations and I'm nearly ready to move on to getting this code to the machine. However, if I'm collaborating with someone else on this saw, or even if I close the design overnight and come back to it the next day, it's not very informative to have all my operations name things like Adaptive 1 and Contour 3. So, I can rename each operation to something more descriptive. I'll rename this first operation by selecting the operation, waiting about one second, clicking again, typing the desired name, and hitting Enter. The next operation is also an adaptive clearing, but only for the front pocket so I'll rename it to something that fits better. Now let's say I want to sort my operations a little bit more so that there's not just one big long list, which is especially useful if there are so many operations that I have to scroll through to see them all. I can select several operations, right click, and choose Add to New Folder. This puts those operations into a folder, and then I can use the previous technique to rename the folder to something descriptive. I'll do the same thing to these three finishing operations, labeling the folder saw body finishing so any future viewers will have some idea of what's inside. Now let's say I actually want to make two saw molds at the same time. I have two saw mold components here, the one that all the toolpaths were originally programmed on, and a copy of it. I could create another setup, copy over all those operations, and go through reselecting geometry manually. But we have a better way. I can select all the operations I'd like to apply to both parts, right-click, and select Add to New Pattern. This opens up the Pattern dialog box. The first option, Linear, works just like a linear pattern in the modeling workspace. I manually select the direction from the geometry, specify a distance, and set the number of instances. I can add another direction to create an array. For a circular pattern, I need to select a rotational axis, the total degree range of the pattern, and the number of instances. Both of these patterns and the mirror pattern require user-specified references, but do not require an additional model of the part. The final choice is component pattern. This option does require that the programmed part is a component and that the second part is another instance of that component. If I look at my modeling features, the first mold is a component called saw mold one where one indicates that it is the first instance. The second mold is called saw mold two, indicating that this is a second instance or a copy of saw mold one. Because this is the case, I can select the first instance that I already programmed and component pattern will automatically find the location and orientation of other instances and copy the toolpath over. All the operations within the pattern are still calculated based off of the first instance and are only displayed there when I select them. However, when I select the pattern itself, the toolpaths are displayed on both instances of the component, showing me that they are indeed patterned. I noticed that I left the saw body finishing folder out of the component pattern. Thankfully, it's easy to add operations or folders to patterns or other folders. I just drag the saw body finishing folder up to the pattern and let go. The folder is inserted into the pattern at the bottom and when I open up the folder, all the operations are still in the correct order. In the trend of renaming, I can also rename my component pattern to something more descriptive. The type of pattern is still displayed in square braces at the end, so there's no need to incorporate that into the name. Finally, I can use templates to quickly generate operations I use consistently. For example, if I do a lot of 3D finishing and usually end up using these three finishing operations, I can select them all, right-click, and select Save as Template. I just need to enter a template name, and now these three operations are stored. To insert them into the setup, but not into the pattern, I'll right-click on the setup and select Create from Template. I'll choose the template I just created, and those three operations appear. I do need to go in and reselect any broken geometry selections, but just like in derived operations, all the parameters are stored, so I go from creation to completed operation quickly. Now that I have toolpath management down, I'm ready to move on to the final step, post-processing.